Christmas is here! <coughs> Sorry, Cheltenham is here! And to celebrate, Paddy Power are offering money back as a free bet on all losers if the starting prize favourite wins. Available on all races on day one of the Cheltenham Festival. Max free bet £10, T's and C's apply, 18 plus begumbleware.org. Well, behind us, the going has got tough, but thankfully it is almost time to get going. The Cheltenham Festival of 2018 is nearly here. And we're here today to preview day one of the festival. I'm Lee Mottersed and I'm joined by my Racing Post colleagues David Jennings and Alistair Down and from our sponsors Paddy Power, Tom Nugent. We're going chronological order through the seven races and that means we have to start with the raw racing Skybet Supreme Novices Hurdle. An Irish banker in this race, or a hot Irish favourite anyway, and has, has become the norm. He represents Willie Mullins and Rich Rich. They've had the last five favourites or joint favourites, three of the last five winners. Get a bird is this year's supreme horse. David Jennings, is he the supreme winner? I think he's the most likely winner. Um, funny enough, if the ground was obviously normal Tuesday ground at Cheltenham, you'd be keen to take him on because I think ground is key to him. And listen to Ruby Walsh talking about him. He thinks he's more in the kind of Alpha of Champagne Fever style rather than Duvan or Vautour. So that's obviously interesting. The ground has come in his favour. As I've said at numerous preview nights, if all the horses were the same price, you would certainly be back and get a bird. At the moment, he's getting out to a backable price. He's, he, there'll probably be a bit of 5-2, to 9-4 available tomorrow morning. Um, I think he's the most likely winner. As regards the best value in the race, I think there's two. I think Paloma Blue, who I backed at 16-1. to 1. I think he's 14-1 to 1 now. I still think he's a little bit of value because he's getting better. It's been a gradual progression for Paloma Blue. I do think he'll handle the ground. And I just love the way he went from the second last to the last with Sam Crow in the delight. When other very good horses couldn't do that, he could made a mistake at the last that day, was value for finishing a little bit closer. And I wouldn't be one bit surprised to see Debouche running well at a huge price. He's a maiden over hurdles, but he was just pipped in the bumper last season. I think his work has improved, and I could think he'll outrun his odds. But they'd be the two for me, Debouche and Paloma Blue, but get a bird the most likely winner. Tom, what price... Um, it, hang, hang on a second. When you say you believe his work has improved, you know his work has improved, or are you just chucking that one at us? No, his work has improved, yeah, I know one of the owners and uh, I was chatting to him during the week and they were, they were trying to decide whether to go for the Supreme or the Ballymore, but the reason they're going for the Supreme is obviously they think they have a better chance of winning it, and I know he's a maiden over hurdles but, you know, it's not beyond the bounds of possibility. So just to confirm his work has improved um, Tom what price is Getterbird now, and tomorrow, what price will he be when all you bookie chappies are desperate to get our money? 13 to 8 at the moment, and to be honest with you, David Jennings' guess is better than mine at the minute. I haven't a clue what price he'll be, but we will try and be competitive. As always, we try and get punters' money in the door at the first race of the festival, just to get the business and get the turnover in. Uh, they're betting around him a little bit. A few quid uh, knocking around for Somerville Boy. He's a 9 to 1 shot at the moment. Of course, he's a form line through Kalashnikov to bet for a hurdle winner. And a few quid for Paloma Blue as well. David uh, marked him down as one to watch out for. Uh, from a trading perspective, uh, we'll be probably looking to take on first flow uh, we think Getabird is the most likely winner the ground will suit and will probably be under him slightly once they go to post Alistair your multi-award winning ears pricked up by the thought of Debouche working well do you fancy the horse um, I think he's as David suggested and he's a very good judge this fellow uh, he's a plausible bonkers price what sort of price is he Debouche 33, 33, 33 working man's price should have won the bumper last year went too early um, but I just I'd like one of his runs this season and I think it's from a good team but he's not on the he'd be sort of fourth choice if you like um, you've got to take get a bird on I think it'd be a bookmaker um, and I have because I'm a Kalashnikov lunatic um, I backed it straight after the Tolworth and I think a bit beforehand as well um, it owes me nothing. I do know that Henry de Bromhead thinks Paloma Blue has an excellent, excellent each way chance. Um, but, you know, I've known my colours to Mars for months for this Kalashnikov. From early December, I said it was certainly, first, December the 2nd, I said it was the best English novice so far. I did say Henderson could have 20 better, but, um, and whether the best English novice will win it or not, I don't know. But I'd love to see it because I think it'd be a small yard. A new market jumps yard, although flat as well, I think it'd be a great result. Yeah, A. Down has had more Kalashnikov pieces in the racing post this year than I've had Winks pieces. He is, he is definitely a fan. 
Uh, next up, the second race on the card, the wonderful sponsorship that is the Racing Post Arkle Trophy. Only five runners this year, but aside from the outsider, a pretty tight market. Tom, how'd you bet? Yeah, we're five to four foot pad. Petit Mouchoir is next in at five to two. St. Calavados, three to one. Ten to one, Brain Power. And Robbins Hill, 80 to one. We'll give you the first one this one. How do you see the race? Uh, we are keen to take on Petit Mouchoir. David Jennings, I'm sure, will probably tell you in a minute that Petit Mouchoir has been a big talking horse in Ireland after his run the last day. Didn't jump uh, on his first run back. If he was to improve his jumping, you'd imagine he'd have a big chance. He didn't have the hardest of finishes that day either. But from a trading perspective, we're just finding it very difficult to see past foot pad. You might think... Oh, bad ground on a stiff track mightn't be in his favour, but he, he ran a Navin in a beginner's chase on bad ground and hacked up there. So I don't think uh, I don't think bad ground on a stiff track will be any any trouble to him at all. And five to four seems a fair fair price to me. Alistair, it's remarkable that over hurdles there was no doubt that Pretty Mouchoir was foot pad superior. They met in the Irish Champ hurdle. They met here, uh, and Pretty Mouchoir was much the better horse. To what extent do you take the evidence that we got from the Irish Arkle that foot pad is superior to Petit Mouchoir over fences? I'm not entirely sure. Um, little hanky, Petit Mouchoir. Imagine cheering that up the hill. Um, I think jumping has been a slight issue. Um, I don't think that's the case with foot pad. The Springer in the market, 12 to 1, as little as a fortnight ago, is St. Calvados. I mean, obviously, the race is cut up, but it's only cut up to pure quality. Um, I think they have a, the only problem with St. Calvados, there's only one way he can go, and that's whiz off, um, jump, and gallop. And Aidan Coleman's got to be wise to the fact he's got two master assassins after him in Ruby Walsh and Davy Russell. And they know what they've got to do to get at St. Calvados. And I think that, in a sense, gives them a wider tactical range. And this place is all about tactics, thinking, jockey ship. And it's not flower arranging out there. They'll be going lickety spit in the article, even in the ground. And I think, got to remember, this is the first time for anyone under 40, they'll have seen a heavy ground festival. It's a very different spectacle and it's a very different punting problem. And so that being the case, who wins the race? I'd, I'm going to stick with St. Calvados. I mean, I think he's in, well, I know he's in blinding Nick at home. Um, they thought the world of him for a long time, and he just may be able to get them at it. And if he does, he won't be stopping. Um, DJ, um, as Alistair says, heavy ground, a rarity here for the festival. In fact, the first time, if we do, if it stays predominantly heavy, which it surely will, it'll be the first time since 1982 the meeting has opened on largely heavy ground. Um, how will that impact on the race, in your opinion? It's funny, I think Footpad will have no problem with it. And as, as Tom said there, I think stiff, cr stiff, stiff track on heavy ground actually will, will suit Footpad. Um, his jumping is terrific. Like, uh, as, as jumping goes, he, is, he just is the perfect shape over a fence he lands running he doesn't waste too much time in the air he's just he's just as good a novice as you could find he deserves to be favorite petty mouchoir did make two really bad mistakes in the first three fences at leperstown um, and that was his first run for a while so you can see why people are making the argument that that form could be turned around i couldn't say for sure whether one or the other will 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 whether that form will, will keep or whether it will be reversed i think they're both very good horses saint calvados Obviously, the ground brings him into the equation. I just wonder, is he good enough? That's my. I know on, on heavy ground, it could make him good enough. I just have my doubts. I thought the race at Warwick fell apart. Um, my, my, <laughs> my idea of the Racing Post Arkle winner for a long, long time had been Brain Power, who's one of my numerous guilty pleasures. And no matter what he does, I always seem to be able to forgive him. I always say, it's like Aoife on a night out. She could go out and get drunk. She could chat up every fella in the place. She could get sick on the way home. And you'd wake up in the morning and all is forgiven. You just forget about it. And that's the way I am with brain power. I just seem to be able to find excuses for him every time. And uh, I just wonder, if Petit Mouchoir goes off like the clappers, if Petit Mouchoir and Footpad follow him, if Nico completely takes his time, rides his own race, gets him settled, gets him into a rhythm, I just wonder, could he potentially pick up the pieces? He's 10 to 1. I don't think he deserves to be 10 to 1. I think he deserves to be about 6 to 1. He probably won't win, but by God, I hope he does. <laughs> what you said about Ethan was so lovely. You can see someone for sort of obsessions like this. You know, there's plenty of good treatment about that all those new drugs would do the synapses in the brain. You'd be fine. You'll get better, Dave. It's, it's actually quite funny because I've done a couple of preview nights. and at the A first, couple? Yeah, a couple, yeah. <laughs> At, at the first, at the first maybe five, 
I tipped Brian Power for the article, and the reaction was so bad, and I got so many boos, and got, so, and got so much abuse, no. that I ended up just not mentioning him, because I just couldn't take it anymore. Well, listen, you be proud. If you fancy him, you say it. And of course, Brain Power had a wind up since his last run, trying to show that like many a Team Sky cyclist, breathing problems need be no barrier to success at top level sport. Commercial break time. Christmas is here! <coughs> Sorry, Cheltenham is here! And to celebrate, Paddy Power are offering money back as a free bet on all losers if the starting price favourite wins. Available on all races on day one of the Cheltenham Festival. Max free bet £10, T's and C's apply, 18 plus begumbleaware.org. You rejoin us here at Cheltenham on the eve of Festival 2018. Race three on day one is the ultimate handicap chase. Unusual in that it hasn't filled and no Irish runners in the three mile handicap. Alistair Down, it's a sort of race that I think you probably adore. I do adore it. Um, I think you can take two stabs, sorry, educated and informed um, views. I think this is the sort of race that's had single farm payments name on it all season. He, to me, in terms of his results, has been fraction disappointing, but he's run very well here in the past, past festival. Um, I think he's got a big squeak, but I kind of bruised from going over the cliff too many times, and I'm very much coup star Savola, who was fourth here over two and a half, two runs ago, very much a three-miler, bolted up at Exeter, um, has had a excellent uninterrupted preparation coming into this and three pounds for the very very competent Lizzie Caddy. Uh, Tom what's the betting? Uh, we're pointing out first of all we're five places a fifth of the odds here for each way better. Kurs Arcevola is the 9-2 favourite been very well backed I think the uh, the learned P. Keeley Esquire has been shouting about that horse on all sorts of uh, Cheltenham preview nights uh, single farm payment is next in 6-1 out from 11-2 to uh, gold present 13-2 to vintage clouds a springer 9-1 to one. he's actually the one I like the, the weather's come to suit him he fell here a couple out last year just I think the pace just got the better of him it was on better ground they were just going to a bit of a clip um, and it's 12-1 to one back are. The ones we might look to take on are Gold Present and 007 from a trading perspective, uh, but it seems to be a fairly hot betting race just at the minute. Hot betting race, but DJ, you're better the day in this one, isn't it? It is, and I, I never thought I'd say this up at about 12 o'clock last night. This was one race where I'd been going through for so long trying to find... I liked the Ultimate. I backed through his nephew in it a few years ago, and it's a race I really like, and I couldn't find a definite fancy in it until about 11 o'clock last night and it just seems so blatantly obvious that single farm payment has to win this race. I went back to his run on New Year's Day here. The, the, it's the worst ground I can remember at Cheltenham was on New Year's Day here in 2016. It was atrocious. That day he was very, very impressive. He was only running off a mark of 125. Nakara Bow was second, so it seems like a lifetime ago. But he just adored the ground that day. He's obviously improved a lot since. But if you remember the race last year, like he looked the winner everywhere bar the line. Um, he was so unlucky. He was just nabbing the line. That was off a mark of 142. Himself and on Tom Sport 2 pulled, pulled nicely clear of the third that day. I thought it was a better renewal than the race tomorrow. He's only up three pounds to a mark of 145. He made an awful mistake at that fence behind us there. Um, at the trials meeting where he was back from 25 to 1 to I think 17 to 2 or something like that and he had jumped well before that I just think it's it's staring us all in the face um, One for me at a big price I won't hinder you with many of my tips but I thought of sizing Cadelco at 33s uh, might not like the ground that would be worried but he would be a an interesting outsider and as I say no Irish runners in this race so whatever happens however bad it gets for the Brits it can't be a 28 nil drubbing we will win this race and we'll probably you'd think hang on hang on what me you just said it might not like the ground you cannot be looking at horses this week about whom you have any doubt that they can go and I mean some of them may not have encountered heavy and certainly not around here but you've got to have a proven soft round performer at the very least this is going to be s snorkels and flippers or, or one who suddenly discovers that he likes soft ground well yeah but you're taking a pump there i mean it's, you know columbus suddenly discovered america but i bet you got a price about it when he was chugging over <laughs> did you yeah i did 1492 my last winner i'm back good lad <laughs> the unibet champion hurdle is the showpiece on day one a blistering performance in the race last season from Bouverdaire. 
He's going to start a red hot favourite this year against a former champ, though, in Faheen. Tom Nugent, champion hurdle betting. Yeah, absolutely fascinating race. Boulevard Dares are 8 to 15 favourite now at the moment. Faheen next in 6 to 1. York Hill 12s. Wicklow Brave 14s. Mellon 16s alongside my tent or yours. And it's 20 to 1 bar. Who wins the champion hurdle? Alistair Down. I think the market's slightly askew. I don't think Bouvet Dare, it Bouvet Dare is a 15 to 8 on chance. It's starting to me you can back for he in each way if you just want to wash your face. Um, but uh, that said, I've long been a Bouvet Dare fan. Uh, since he was third to Altio in the novice, I thought that's the horse for the future. I didn't want writing off the winner, but the one that was going to improve hugely uh, was Bouvet Dare. And I just like everything about him. He trap I like the way he jumps, I like the minimum time he spends in the air. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, Tom, do you agree? Uh, I think he is definitely the most likely winner of the race. I'm not into backing odds on shot. If I, to, if I was to have a bet in the race, I'd probably back Wicklow Brave each way or possibly without. Um, he's an 11 to 2 shot in the without market uh, just at the moment. Uh, anytime he's met by ground, he's generally handled it. It all depends on whether he jumps off with them. Okay. Um, DJ. Massive challenge from Willie Mullins taking on Bouvedere, headed of course by Faheen. Um, are the romantics that want to see Faheen come back to his best dreaming, or is there a realistic chance he can get back his crown? There's a chance. I don't think there's a realistic chance, but there is a there is a slim chance that we will see the real Faheen. You know, he'll be fine on the ground. Um, I just were the one thing that really disappointed me with him when he was beaten by Super Sunday in the Irish Champion Hurdle was his jumping. I think not enough has been said about that. Down the back, he was deplorable. Now, he's never been a fantastic jumper, but I thought he was particularly bad down the back straight at Leopard. And they're putting cheek pieces on him for the first time. What's there to lose? You know, you're not odds on favour for the champion hurdle. You're seven to one. I think that's probably a good move. Hopefully, they'll liven him up a bit because I think that's the key. Getting him back to that kind of keen, enthusiastic Faheen, that's the key. Um, there's too many question marks, though. Bouvard Air looks rock solid. He'll adore the ground. He's the best jumper in the race. He's at the moment he's by far the best horse in the race and he's by far the most likely winner of the race as regards a bet I think the bet in the race is back in Mellon without I think he obviously hasn't gone and done it but he was second in the Supreme last year his work has finally come right like if you think of it Paul Townend has picked him as second choice so he thinks he'll finish ahead of Wicklow Brave and York Hill it's hard to believe that York Hill is the fourth choice in the race but I just think he's the completely forgotten horse. Like, if he didn't run in the Irish champion hurdle, he'd be second favourite, probably. And I think at 7-1. to one. I don't think he'd win the race, but I think he'd finish in the first three. Mellon then to be in the first three for DJ. I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing Bouvard uh, dot up as he did 12 months ago. That was part two. Part three comes up after this. Christmas is here! <coughs> Sorry, Cheltenham is here! And to celebrate, Paddy Power are offering money back as a free bet on all losers if the starting price favourite wins. Available on all races on day one of the Cheltenham Festival. Max free bet £10, T's and C's apply, 18plusbegumbleaware.org. Hello all, welcome back to Cheltenham on the eve of the first day of the 28th Festival. Myself, Lee Mottiser, David Jennings, Alistair Down and Tom Nugent from Paddy Power here now looking at the last three races on Tuesday, the first of which is the OLBG Mayor's Hurdle. Only nine runners, surprisingly, in this one. Apples J, the defending champion. Again, another red-hot favourite. DJ, she looks incredibly solid. She does. She does. She'll probably win. Um, you said that with, with less confidence than yeah, I expected. Yeah, I, I, she'll probably win. Like, if, you, if we were talking, you know, tomorrow night and we're talking about the race, I would be surprised if she was beaten, but... Of all the short prices, she's not the one I think that the most that's the most bomb proof. Go on, say why. Um well I just I would prefer to her to have ran since Christmas. I just one thing that's always in the back of my head is mayors after a break. It's just not something you just it's just one little question mark. Uh, secondly, she she never wins by far, which is a good thing, but it always makes her vulnerable, you know, if she made a mistake at the last or or whatever. But I, I just think it's a better race than people give it credit for. Benny's the Jew is held in the highest regard, like they think an awful lot of her. They think she's very, very good. Um, she could be, in time, a proper grade one staying chaser, but she, when she jumps fences, she's so good over fences, she actually hurts herself, and it takes her a long time to come round after a chase. Um, 
Look, she's very good. La Bagawa, um, I think the ground will suit her more than it do- has done at the last few festivals. And then you've got Jarrah's Girl, who's the complete forgotten horse in the race, was well fancy for this race last year, and fell, um, I think, three out or four out. Um, I think, as regards a bet in the race, I would far rather back Jarrah's Girl without, uh, without Apple's Jade at eight or ten to one than back... Them back. Hang on, hang on a minute. Hang back. On, hang on Hold a minute. on, I've got the hang eyes. On a minute. Col- the Columbus back is on the end. He's, yeah. he's trying to interject. He loves all this betting without. It's yeah. not betting without money, it's betting without the favourite or whatever. But it's very much a, an Irish betting thing. You do it all day, every day, on every course. You never see it over there. I think it's a great thing. Why don't we have more of it over here? It, Tom, why don't we have more of it over here? Well, Alistair, luckily for you, you can do it online with Paddy Power. That was a shameless plug from our sponsor, Paddy Power. Back to you, DJ. Yeah, it's huge. It's just I, I'm not a huge punter. So for me, these short prices are, are, you know, some of them you want to take on. But the ones that you think will probably win, it's a great alternative that I can back Jer's Girl at 8 or 10 to 1 and know that you've got a realistic chance of collecting. And you're taking Apple's Jade completely out of the equation. So I just think value-wise, it's a cracking bet for some of these races. Alistair Down, Apples Jade, does she win? Probably, but I haven't had a... What price are we Apples now? Four to seven. Yeah. Well, hello. There's 28 races here. I haven't had an odds on bet since I was 19, and I ain't going to start now. I'm a big Jersey Girl fan. I'm a Gavin Cromwell fanatic. I think he's a tremendous trainer, um, and I should have to give Jennings some money to do this bet without when Neptune is in fixation with Saturn or whatever it is. It's all too complicated for an old part like myself don't do yourself down i'm i like jer's girl and i should be doing this betting without do you have anything meaningful to add <laughs> not really no just we're, we're pointing out i spoke i spoke to our uh, very famous trader frank hickey this morning and uh jer's girl is into 11 to 2 in the betting without markets it's been a right few quid for her each way and without so she's shortened it up a bit just one key thing on jer's girl if ever there was a horse that needs this ground to be at her best. This is it. She will. She's like she. She'd beat Michael Phelps. Like, would you know? <laughs> That's good. That. Yeah. Um, I was. I went out this morning. Got wet on the course. And I was. I was walking down the horse walk. The the, the brown thing behind us. Um, by the side of the race course. Uh, Jersey was walking towards me. And I said hello to the jockey riding Jersey And he Breen Breen Kane. He was ecstatic about the ground and the weather. So almost as happy as DJ is when Aoife walks into the front door. Yeah, you are happy yeah, that happens. That is very happy. That is very happy. Yeah. Um, the man beside me uh, got me to, uh, or persuaded me to make one of my many anti-post investments at this Cheltenham Festival. When a few weeks ago, he recommended back in jury duty uh, in the National Chase. He was 12 then. Twel- <laughs> Hang on a minute. There's a we, 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 well, yeah, it's, uh, th- this is meant to be professional broadcasting. You can't just start handing are across. Taking that ele- are you taking that 11 to 2? 40 quid is the absolute maximum you get as a professional broadcaster for this team. We do it for the art. Um, yeah, DJ recommended back in jury duty for the four miler. This ground, that's a bit of a worry now, isn't it? Uh, it is, it is. It's funny. I backed him at 16 to 1 and I was absolutely thrilled. And I just thought all season this is the perfect horse for the race. 1.480's reached over fences, 1.47 over hurdles. That's good enough to win the na- last five runnings of the race. It's even higher than Manila Rocco. And I just thought everything about jury duty screams four miler. Jamie Codd is riding, he'll creep away. Don't expect to see him anywhere on the scene until hopefully turn it for home. I don't even want him to hit the front until 50 yards from the line because he idles badly, really badly. So that's a big worry. You said none of this when you'd recommended I back it. But, but, I think he's the best horse in the race. Like if you go back to the pretemps last year, which was a proper race, like presenting Percy won it. It was a real good race. He was bang there at the last. So he has course form. He definitely stays three miles. Don't mind that run at Nace because uh, the horse that fell at the last moss back left him clear. It's the worst thing that could have happened because he just idled so badly. I think he'll stay. Everybody in the yard doesn't fancy him, <laughs> which is extremely worrying. I was on a preview night with Keith Donahue the other night. He tipped up moss back from the stable. I've been speaking to Gordon about him, and Gordon is kind of, yeah, he has a chance. He's kind of lukewarm. I can't find anybody of note to fancy Jerry Judy, but Lee, oh. I do. Whoa. So does that fill you with confidence? Well, no. I, I'd have been filled with more confidence if you said Gordon quite liked him. But he the way does. He, well, uh, he does. But I just uh, think the stable seemed to fancy Moss back more. Okay. Right. Alistair, wasn't this the race last year you had it right off with Tiger Roll? Uh, um, it had a, something of a touch, yeah. So there was one since Columbus, that's right. Um, 
I don't, for some reason, I love the four miler, but for some reason I can't get overexcited. I'm interested in no comment trained by Philip Hobbs. Now, Philip has had a nightmare season. Last week, he had 28 entries here priced up and only two in single figures. Now, that's so un -Hobbs. And the rest were 25 to 1 plus, I mean it. Um, so that's how his season's been. Uh, Derek O'Connor's been over to school this horse, obviously been booked sometime before Christmas last. Um, and I, th I think no comment. They're scoping back, well, they're scoping clean now at Philip Hobbs. I would think this is his chance of a strike during the week. I have an obsession running in the race called Clondor Kean, who I lost plenty of money on at the meeting last year. Its form of offences have been indifferent except for one run. But there, what it's doing here, I don't know, but Susie Smith, who trains down at Lewis, is no, she's no mug, and blinkered first time, and possibly with all sorts of other, um, help, help, help me think less about going home and more about the winning post. I'll have to have a tenor on that, but not at 25 to 1. It should be 66s, and why you're part of a licensed bookmaker, I have no idea. Only you're sponsoring us, wonderful people. Defend yourself, Tom Nugent. Uh, we're just afraid of whatever Alistair Down wants to back. That's why we shaft him in. Uh, that they were nine to two favourite jury duty just at the minute. Uh, he's taken. A, he's, he's quite soft in the market. We haven't decided to take anything on just yet. The one I really liked, and tell me if I'm mad. I love Miss Puerfa. I think she's a great mare. Big, massive, strapping Maller filly, chestnut horse. I think uh, Mr. Honeyball is one of the sharpest in the business over here. And Will Biddick is no slouch. They always talk about look for an Irish amateur. I think Will Biddick is a good rider. She's seven to one at the minute. A DJ talk spoke about ratings. There, jury duty is 148. Rat Vinden is 150. Mossback is 150. She's 146 rated and in receipt of seven pounds. She's my bet of the day. I really, really like her. Okay, brilliant. Um, right now, then, the last race. Um, the plotting race has the plotting shed as one of the leading contenders. But this is a race in which they've all been set up for a touch. Any second now, as well, DJ has been very well back. You're trying to find a horse here that's not well ahead of his handicap mark is probably quite difficult. Uh, that's not. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, yes. sorry. Yeah, yeah, I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I think they're all. They all are potentially well treated. It's. This is like this. This will probably tell you how good a trainer is at getting a horse ready for the race because there's such a small window there between one four five and one four three. Is it one four three or one four two? Um, is the bottom. So it takes a lot of expertise, and in that regard, I think Ted Walsh has done a terrific job with any second now. Entirely within the rules, though. Entirely within the rules. Yes, and and. Probably, you know, he's been running grade one races, so, you know, I don't think there's that much messing about, but I just think he's a very, very good horse, and I think the ground is, is, a, is a plus to him, because I think it'll slow some of the others down. Like, when, when he won the grade two, um, it was the Moscow Flyer, was it? Yeah, when he won the grade two Moscow Flyer at Nace, that was soft ground that day. Um, and I think he's always thought he has the potential to be his next best horse. Like, you know, he, he's always had one every couple of years. I think he could be virgin on grade one class over fences. He's definitely a grade two horse, and if you go back Back to his run behind invitation only at Navin. That for me was one of the best novice chase of the year. It was a beginner's chase, but it was one of the best of them because they went a million. Uh, invitation only led. The two of them never missed a beat the whole way around. I thought that was a real good performance. Mark Walsh has ridden them and all the starts over fences, gets on well with them. I just think all the stars have aligned for any second now, and I think he deserves to be favoured. Yeah, interesting that Paul Nichols has a really exciting, well, interesting horse called Move With The Times, who was bound possibly for this race. They've now kept him back for the plate on Thursday. He's owned by JP as well, so it looks like they're just very keen to keep those two apart. Um, Tom, uh, how are they about on this one? Yeah, any second now is our 62 favourite. The plotting shed is quite weak, uh, 13 to 2 just now. Barney Dwan also weak, an 8 to 1 shot. 10 to 1 is Rotherby and Mr. Whittaker and 12 to 1 bar. Mr. Whittaker's a springer from 14 to 1. Uh, he's a horse I quite like each way. Did he win here last time on quite bad ground as well? And uh, just to back up DJ there on any second now, he's been a big talking horse in Ireland on the preview circuit. Um, Obviously, uh, he won his maiden hurdle at 66 to 1. He was a bit of a surprise and then followed up in the grade 2 Moscow Flyer and really showed his form. Obviously, in beginner chases, bumped into the likes of Mona Lee and Invitation Only and has had two decent runs in behind Fun Pad the last twice, up to two and a half miles. I think he's an absolutely outstanding chance here tomorrow. Alistair, the winner. I think this is the, the closest fought contested handicap in the meeting. Um, this is a degree class exercise for trainers to get one in with just. It's a nine pound weight range and 
to get one in even with a couple of pounds better than you hope is it's kind of a work of art i'm all over any second now um backed him last week um ted was very happy ted is not a tourist at this meeting in terms of bringing horses over he just doesn't do it but there are a hatful of fancy ones and against mr whistle has been backed i think not least because our excellent racing postman Richard Austin made his nap of the day uh, in his mega preview of the week, which is brilliant in, debate, in the paper. Um, there's Barney Dwan has been fancied. I'm interested to hear it's on the drift. Um, I think Markov could run well at a massive price for Ben Pauling, but I am any second now, and yeah, it'd be a good day if that wins. Okay, guys, um, wrap-up time then. Your best bets of day one of the festival. David Jennings. Single farm payment. Tom Nugent. Miss Poirfra on the National Hunt Chase. And uh, Mr Alistair Down. God. Um, I want Kalashnikov to win. Um, head, heart and wallet. <laughs> A fantastic combination. Head, heart and wallet. The guys will be back again through the week. I uh, bid you farewell now. Bruce Millington will have the microphone tomorrow. Have a fantastic Cheltenham Festival and may all your bets be winning ones. Christmas is here! <coughs> Sorry, Cheltenham is here! And to celebrate, Paddy Power are offering money back as a free bet on all losers if the starting prize favourite wins. Available on all races on day one of the Cheltenham Festival. Max free bet £10, T's and C's apply. 18 plus, be